episode of Jay Leno's Garage. As you know, we are huge Lamborghini enthusiasts here on this website. Uh, this is a 1991 Lamborghini Diablo. But there's a bit of a story to this car. You know, I've had my uh, Lamborghinis for oh, almost 30 years, some of them. And uh, they've been serviced by one man and one man only. That's the mysterious Franco. We've mentioned Franco many times. Remember I told you about the guy who could take the head off a mirror without taking the engine out? Nobody else could do that, though. We're going to meet him today. He owns a place called Franco's European Sports Cars. I call it Franco's Lamborghini because he's always got mirrors and, and uh, espadas and everything. And this is his personal car that he bought from a customer. So I'm going to introduce you to the mysterious Franco and his son. Franco Bucha, come on in here. Sure. How are you, Franco? Good, good. Good to Jay, see you, my you? friend. Good, good you too. He's been, Thank working, you. been doing my cars yeah, for too. 30 years. I've had my Countach. It's got, I don't know. I don't know how many miles on it, but it still runs good, yeah. thanks. And this is your, your personal car, correct? Yes, this is my personal car. Okay, now, what, this was a customer car that had sort of been neglected, fair to say? No, basically, you know, the, the, uh, this customer said he had some problem, a physical problem, I couldn't drive it anymore. Okay, right. Then it's, uh, you know, he want to sell the car. And then uh, I said, I proposed like, if I could buy for myself everything. Of course, they say, agree, you know, I, not, you know, I didn't have no problem, I say yeah. yes. And uh, from there, from, uh, since then, I've been over the car. And that's what I say, I'll be hip, and that's the car. Yeah, so, so huh. but I mean, you've worked on everybody's Lamborghinis yeah, for yes. the last 30, almost 40 years, yeah, yeah. so finally you got one of your own. And yeah, this is your son, Damien. Damien is in yeah, the company so the, with you as well. Hey, Damien, how are you? Good, how's it going? Good to see you. I'm the, Damien, I remember he's just listening to this thing. Each time I go back yeah. with my car, he'd be a little bit bigger. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Keep eating. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, for those that don't know, the Diablo was built under Chrysler. Lee Iacocca bought, uh, well, Lee Iacocca and Chrysler bought Lamborghini for $6 million back in the, in the late 80s for the price of a half a dozen of Ventadors, basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pretty much. They bought the whole pretty company, much. but it was pretty bankrupt, and the Diablo was the first car done under the new regime of Chrysler, isn't that correct? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Did Gandini yeah. have anything to do with this styling, do you remember? Yeah. Um, I think he did. Yeah, Marcello, yeah, was, yeah Marcello Gandini, Marcello, yeah, right, I believe right, he, uh, he did design it, which I think he did an amazing job. So it was basically Countach running gear, correct? Yeah, I mean, they redesigned everything, but they used the same layout. Right. I mean, they basically, it's just a newer version, updated version of, the, of a Countach. Right, right. And, um, and it was rated originally at 492 horsepower, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, so it was 492. V12 fuel injected, no carburetors. Yes. Right, because it's 91 by that time, everything. Yeah, was... exactly. They went away from the mechanical fuel injection and finally went to the new world. Now, you were telling me that this car was being kept down by the beach, and I think it was... Uh, well, you've guys done a lot. You, you... Yeah, yeah. It was a little, little rust here and there. A little, you know. Yeah. Needed a little fixing up, and uh, and of course, everything we did, we went crazy, right? So it's like, oh, if we have to do this on the engine, let's pull the whole thing. And right, let's... right. Well, you've done a beautiful job because I remember Thank it you. used to be black and had. Yeah, all over yeah. It and there was, it was. Yeah. Some kids had it for a while. Yeah, some kids owned it, <laughs> yeah. and they they yeah. wanted it. So oh, there was yes. a, little, a couple stickers, yes. and they yeah. blacked out the back of the car, and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, it, and you know, there are very few cars that look good in white, but this looks nice in white. And this whole, the way the cut of this door. And it's a wide car, isn't it? Super wide. Super. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and I think the car's so um, extreme looking that a low key color yeah. is a nice uh, uh, contrast. This is probably the most misunderstood of all the Lamborghinis, isn't it? Possibly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. because, well, I know you mentioned the VT was. Probably, yeah. was that the low point? Yeah, I mean, uh, when they first came out with the VT, they went to four-wheel drive, and it's, they didn't have it perfected, I think, when they first started it. Right. And then as it, uh, as it progressed, I mean, I think it was a good call to go four-wheel drive. Right. Because they realized to keep the car on, on the, the road. road. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially with so much power. I mean, it, it can be a little hairy driving this car uh, for that reason. There's no traction control or anything. Yeah, so. I like the two-wheel drive. Is there power steering in this? No, no power steering. Power steering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no power, power steering, no, no ABS. power brake, no, no nothing. You got nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a nothing here. <laughs> you're, you're on your well, own. <laughs> it's, it's a raw car. Well, everybody talks about the McLaren F1. No mm. power steering. No, mm. no, and this doesn't have any of that either. No, no. stability, no traction control. Mm. No, this is yeah. raw. This yeah. is as raw yeah. as it gets. Well, yeah, and it has the classic uh, five-speed gearbox. Yes. With, uh, with the gated shifter, which yeah. to me, really, I love that period. That's what I like. And Diablos can be had, 
well, fairly reasonably now by supercar standards. Yeah, I would yeah. say so. Yeah, and they're, they're complicated, but not that tough to work on. It's basically the same V12 as goes all the way back to the beginning, isn't it? Oh, it's the, almost the same design, you know. I mean, they were two valves in the beginning, but it's dual overhead cam. Right. I mean, same kind of layout, and it was, I think, a great, great engine design. They just kept making it better over the years, you know? Yeah, let's, uh, let's open the door. Let's show how this door... Okay, this... Yeah. Boy, that's... Uh... I mean, there's plenty of room in there, isn't there? It's, uh, it is more spacious than the Countach, I would yeah, say. Yeah, the Countach is a little cramped. Yeah, and also we, you know, we put um, the aluminum plates on the, on the pedals. Right, I see that. To make it look a little more modern. And we also spaced the pedals out a little bit because they were super tight, right. as you probably know in the Countach. Right, I wouldn't want to uh, parallel park it, though. It's a little tricky. Isn't no, it? no, you will be working your, yeah. your biceps and your triceps on that one. <laughs> let's, uh, let's open the hood and see what, sure. see what it looks like. Well, there you go, the famous Lamborghini V12. How many liter is this? 5.7. 5.7 liter, okay. And uh, with uh, Franco's little tuning touches, I imagine you're getting probably another 40, 50 horsepower more, correct? Yeah, you know, that'd be... Look, think he smiles, so he knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he know all of the secret. Well, he yeah, know yeah. all of the secret. Well, he <laughs> no tell, he no tell. <laughs> he's sworn to secrecy. You well, have to go to his Lamborghini shop to get this kind of power. <laughs> <laughs> but I know yeah. everybody brings their cars to, uh, to Franco. He does a, a terrific job. Because these cars were finicky, you know, late 80s, early 90s, supercars were still not particularly reliable, you know, to, you know it's not no. like now where everything is computer controlled. So. No, no, it was, it's not, uh, you had to have a, a, a relationship with your car. That's right. And it was, it was give and take. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> you know, it's so funny, back in the 90s, you open this hood and that seemed so complicated. Now it looks so simple. Mm. Yeah. yeah, compared so, to modern cars. I, I, mean, I, would, I would call it spacious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got room in here. There's your air cleaners on each side there, your fuel injection unit. Yeah. You, can, you can go in and just grab your headers and just... Yeah. Not... You can still see the engine. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. And it's all built. Those are the stock wheels. Well, these are actually no? off of a 96. No. Oh, these are later. Okay. Yeah, because we updated the brakes and we went a lot bigger. Right. Because the original brakes are... Kind of horrifying for right. a car that's around 500 horsepower. Right, right. You know, it could get a little sketchy. I mean, it's a 200 mile an hour car. Does it have anti-lock brakes? No, it does not have ABS. Oh, really? No yeah. ABS even. No. 91. Wow. 91 so, was a long time ago. It seems, <laughs> apparently, it seems like just the other yeah. day to us, but it, it was it was a yes. long time ago. It was that transitional period? And boy, it's a wide car, isn't yeah. it? What kind of gas mileage does it get? About 11? Well, <laughs> about 8? I, I, I think it's at the, uh, the service station in North. Yeah. Um, and they ask yeah. <laughs> yeah. you got to shut the engine off when you're filling uh, up yeah. to keep you from know, getting ahead of the pump. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but a, these, these engines, for all the finickiness, are very robust. It's a strong... It's rock solid. Yeah, yeah. You can't... I don't really hear many of them throwing a rod or anything like that. They're, no, they're pretty no. bulletproof. Yeah, no, the... the if anything, the, the clutch is something that uh, would go out yeah. before anything else, but the engine was... And this engine basically ran from 1964 up until just a couple of years ago, the basic yeah, oh, architecture. Basic yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think so. only in the Aventador they changed yeah, some so. of the structure, but still kept the overall design. You see, and so if you have one of these guys, you've got to go to Franco. He needs all the little secrets. Mm. <laughs> Those little tricks. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think, it's, uh, I think it's time to take it for a ride. Oh. Well, it's easier to get into than a Countach. Well, before we fire it out, let's take a look at what we got here. Pretty much classic Lamborghini speedometer, oil pressure, temperature, tachometer, of course. Uh, fuel, I mean battery, the usual stuff. Uh, the classic Alpine stereo, of course, climate control, headlights. I mean, the electric here, electric windows. And, of course, the famous gated shifter. And you've got your ashtray there, and I guess that's a power plug now. That's not a cigarette lighter. That's a power plug. But it's pretty straightforward, and uh, nothing fancy, no elaborate electronics. But it's got that great sound. Take a listen. Let's take it for a ride. Sit 
and a little off to the right, as a lot of supercars from the 80s and 90s did, because your uprights are right there, but it's not bad. And there's plenty of leg room, <laughs> certainly more leg room than in my Kunta. Brakes are very nice. You know, initial impression is transmission is wonderful. Boy, it shifts really smooth and easily. It's very progressive. It's really nice. Well, the clutch itself, we put a, the carbon Kevlar, so they would last a lot longer. And a little, yeah. It's actually a little, a little softer, but we also modified the slave cylinder. Okay. We but did, it wasn't a carbon clutch originally, no, was it? No. No, it's regular. Boy, it's very nice. The clutch is very nice. I mean, these are all updates that people do to their uh, Diablo if they have one. I mean, it's hard to believe this car is 25 years old. Yeah. It's a... Uh, and people still look at it like it's it was made yesterday. Oh yeah. They, yeah, you'll get a lot of head turns and maybe more attention than you want. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah but it's still old school, but we try to make it yeah. user I mean, friendly. And this car's got 26,000 miles on it, which is actually a lot for some supercars. Yes. <laughs> it's a, actually broken in. Yeah. Pulls nicely. Yeah. Wow. It puts a smile on my face. Oh yeah, it's a good boy, it's fantastic. It looks like such a big heavy car, but when you're in it, it's not it's quite light actually. You barely turn in 2,500 RPM, so that's gonna help the gas mileage a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, you know, it rides smoother than my Carrera GT. <laughs> well, what a fantastic sound! I remember David E. Davis from Car and Driver said everybody should drive a V12 car at least once in their lifetime, and. Uh, Oh, I get to do it all the time. This is fantastic. Come on, let's go for a ride. Let's go someplace where the car is wider than the road. I'll show you. There are so many great driving roads around Los Angeles. Everybody talks about the LA traffic, and it is the worst. But that's on the 5 and the 405 and the 101. Once you get up in the hills, I haven't even seen another car. Well, one went by. Okay, I saw one car. Yeah, no matter how many roads, everyone has their favorite secret road. Yeah, there's all kinds of secret roads around here. I mean, it's like you're in another country. I mean, you're not even in, you're still in LA. No, it's hard to believe. You know, I always thought of these Diablo as a little clunky and heavy, but when they're set up properly and done right, boy, what a joy this is to drive. I'm so impressed with this transmission and this Kevlar clutch. Uh, I want to thank Damien. Franco, Franco, come in here. We have three generations of Franco Lamborghini people. We have Franco, and we have Damien, and this is Dave, your grandson, correct? Yeah. So look at that. Yeah, my grandson. So you got to check out Franco's shop. Now remember, there's, there's no cappuccino machine. There's no, there's, there's no place for people to look through magazines. It's a classic, old-fashioned, uh, you know, car repair shop. And boy, he just does a wonderful job as this car attests. So uh, you saw his shop before. It's not too fancy, 
but that's okay. See, they don't, you don't have to pay for that part of it. So you just pay for the good stuff. So Franco, thank you very much. You're welcome. Dave, everybody. thank you for yeah, carrying on the tradition. Okay. And Damien, thank, thank you too. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Ha <laughs> ha!